Hello, dear viewers. Today we will touch on one of the most exciting and important topics in Christianity. What is hell according to the Bible? We often hear about heaven and hell, but few people think about what the Holy Scriptures actually say about this. Why did God create hell, and who is it for? What awaits us after death? Is there salvation from eternal torment? In this video, we will try to answer these questions and reveal the hidden truth about hell. Over the next 30 minutes, we'll look at the different aspects of hell as described in the Old and New Testaments, learn what Sheol, Hyena, and Hades mean, and dive into the metaphors and symbolism the Bible uses to describe this place. We will also discuss the nature of hell, its purpose and who it is for, and how to escape it through faith in Jesus Christ. Stay with us, and you will learn a lot of new and interesting things about what the Bible says about hell. At the end of the video, we will summarize and give food for thought so that everyone can draw their own conclusions and strengthen their faith. First, let's define what hell is in the biblical sense. The Bible uses several terms to refer to the place of punishment and torment after death. One such term is Sheol. In the Old Testament, Sheol is often mentioned as the place where all the dead go, regardless of their righteousness or sinfulness. This is a kind of underground kingdom of the dead, where souls are in a state of waiting. In the Psalms and the book of Job, Sheol is described as a dark and gloomy place where joy and light are absent. For example, Psalm 89. 11 says, Will thy mercy be told in the grave? thy truth in the place of destruction. This emphasizes that Sheol was perceived as a place without hope or joy. The New Testament uses another term, Hyhenna. Gehenna, or the Valley of Hinnom, was a real place outside the walls of Jerusalem where garbage and the corpses of criminals were burned. Jesus uses this image to describe hell as a place of eternal fire and torment. In Matthew 5.22, he says, Whoever says, you fool, shall be in danger of hellfire. Hyena becomes a symbol of final judgment and punishment for sinners. Additionally, the New Testament uses the term Hades, which is closer in meaning to Sheol. Hades is the place where the souls of the dead are kept until the final judgment. In the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Luke 16:19. 31, Jesus describes Hades as a place of torment for the unrighteous, while the righteous are in Abraham's bosom. Thus, we see that the Bible describes hell as a place of punishment and torment for sinners. But it is important to understand that this place was not originally intended for people. Matthew 25, 41 says that hell was prepared for the devil and his angels. Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. Thus, the terms Sheol, Gienna, and Hades help us better understand the biblical concept of the place of eternal punishment. Sheol symbolizes the general place of residence of the dead. Gienna represents hell as a place of torment and fire and Hades as a temporary place for souls until the Day of Judgment. Now that we've got the terminology out of the way, let's look at how hell is described in the Old Testament. Now let's take a closer look at the different terms used in the Bible to describe hell. Sheol is a Hebrew word found in the Old Testament. Sheol is described as an underground place where all the dead go, regardless of their righteousness or sinfulness. This is a kind of shadow world where souls are in a state of waiting. Job 10.21 22 describes Sheol as a land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land of darkness like night, a land of the shadow of death, where there is no order and light as darkness. These verses highlight the gloom and hopelessness of the place. In Genesis 37, 35, Jacob says, I will go down to my son in Sheol with sorrow, indicating that even the righteous expected to go to Sheol after death. Hyena. This term is found in the New Testament and is of Greek origin. Gienna was a real valley south of Jerusalem where garbage and corpses were burned. 
Jesus uses this image to describe hell as a place of eternal fire. In Mark 9, 43, 48, Jesus warns, If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to go into hell with both hands into the unquenchable fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. These words emphasize the eternal torment and suffering that awaits sinners in hell, Ades. This term is also used in the New Testament and is closer in meaning to Sheol. Ades is described as a temporary residence for the souls of the dead until the final judgment. In the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Luke 16, 23, Jesus says, And in hell, being in torment, he lifted up his eyes and saw Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. This indicates that Hades is a place of torment for the unrighteous, while the righteous are in the bosom of Abraham. Revelation 20, 13, 14 says, The sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead that were in them, and everyone was judged according to his works, and death and hell were cast into the lake of fire. Thus, we see that the Bible uses different terms to describe hell, each emphasizing different aspects of the place, from the temporary place of souls to the place of final punishment and torment. These terms help us to better understand the biblical concept of eternal punishment and its various aspects. Now that we've covered the basic terms used in the Bible to refer to hell, let's move on to the next part and look at the description of hell in the Old Testament. Now let's take a closer look at how hell is described in the Old Testament. The Old Testament gives us several key descriptions of Sheol that help us understand how the ancient Hebrews imagined the place after death. Job 10.21, 22 describes Sheol as a land of darkness and the shadow of death, a land of darkness like night, a land of the shadow of death, where there is no order and light as darkness. These verses highlight the gloom and hopelessness of the place. Sheol is presented as a place where there is no joy and light, and where souls are in a state of oblivion and darkness. In Psalm 6, 6, David exclaims, In Sheol there is no remembrance of you, in the grave who will praise you. The point here is that Sheol is a place where it is impossible to praise God or remember Him. It is a state of complete separation from God, with no room for worship or fellowship with Him. Proverbs 9.18 says, But they do not know that the dead are there, nor that they are invited by her in the depths of Sheol. This indicates that Sheol is a place where the dead live, devoid of life and joy. Here souls are in a state of eternal oblivion and the absence of any activity. Isaiah 14, 9, 11 describes the fall of the king of Babylon to Sheol. Hell, hell trembled for you to meet you at your entrance. It awakened for you the dead, all the leaders of the earth, raised up all the kings of the heathen from their thrones. They will all be to tell you, and you became powerless like us, and you became like us. This is a place where even the most powerful and high-ranking people find themselves in the same position as the rest of the dead, deprived of power and strength. These descriptions help us understand that in the Old Testament, Sheol was perceived as a dark and gloomy place where there was no joy, light, and communication with God. It is a place of eternal oblivion and a state of separation from God's presence. In the next part, we will look at how hell is described in the New Testament to see how the understanding of this place has changed in later texts of the Bible. In the New Testament, we find more detailed and vivid descriptions of hell than in the Old Testament. Jesus often spoke about hell and warned people about the eternal torment that awaits sinners. In Matthew 5.22, Jesus says, Whoever says, You fool, is liable to hell fire. Here he uses the image of Hyhenna to describe hell as a place of eternal fire. Gehenna, or the Valley of Hinnom, was a place outside the walls of Jerusalem where garbage and corpses were burned. 
Jesus uses this imagery to emphasize the reality and horror of eternal torment. In Mark 9, 43, 48, Jesus warns, If your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to go into hell with both hands, into the unquenchable fire, where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. These words emphasize the eternal torment and suffering that awaits sinners in hell. The fire does not go out and the worm does not die, indicating constant and ongoing suffering. In Luke 16, 19, 31, Jesus tells the parable of the rich man and Lazarus. In this parable, after death, a rich man ends up in hell, where he suffers from torment and thirst. He sees Lazarus comforted in Abraham's bosom and asks Abraham to send Lazarus to ease his suffering. But Abraham replies, Between us and you there is a great gulf, so that those who want to cross from here to you cannot, neither can they cross from there to us. This emphasizes that hell is a place of eternal separation from the righteous and God. Revelation 20.10 speaks of the final fate of the devil and his followers. And the devil who deceived them was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. This lake of fire symbolizes the final and eternal punishment for the devil, his angels, and all the unrighteous. These descriptions help us understand that the New Testament perceives hell as a place of eternal torment, fire, and separation from God. This is a place where sinners will suffer endlessly and from where there is no salvation. In the next part, we will look at the description of hell in the revelation of John the theologian to delve deeper into the visions and prophecies about this place. The revelation of John the evangelist, the last book of the New Testament, offers us the most vivid and frightening images of hell. This book is filled with symbolism and prophecies that give us insight into the ultimate fate of sinners and the forces of evil. Revelation 20.10 says, And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, and they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Here, hell is described as a lake of fire and brimstone where the devil, the beast, and the false prophet will be tormented forever. This image emphasizes the absolute and eternal nature of punishment. Revelation 14, 9, 11 gives another dire warning. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, Whoever worships the beast and his image and receives his mark on his forehead or on his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God, the wine whole, prepared in the cup of his wrath, and will be tormented with fire and brimstone before the holy angels and before the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment will ascend forever and ever, and they who worship the beast and his image and who receive his mark will have no rest day or night. His Name these verses describe the torment of those who worship the beast and receive his mark, emphasizing their endless suffering and lack of peace. In Revelation 20.13, 15, we see the scene of the final judgment. And the sea gave up the dead that were in it, and death and hell gave up the dead that were in them, and everyone was judged according to his works, and death and hell were thrown into the lake fiery. This is the second death and whoever was not written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. Here hell is depicted as a place where all the unrighteous will be gathered for final judgment, and those whose names are not found in the book of life will be thrown into the lake of fire, symbolizing final and eternal punishment. Revelation also speaks of the second death. Revelation 21, 8 says, but the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and fornicators and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. The second death is the final separation from God and eternal punishment in the lake of fire for all the unrighteous. 
These images in the revelation of John the theologian help us understand that hell is not just a place of temporary punishment, but a place of eternal torment and separation from God. Hell is described as a lake of fire and brimstone, where the torment never ends and where sinners will suffer forever. In the next part, we will look at the nature of hell, its physical and spiritual aspects, in order to better understand what kind of place it is. To better understand the nature of hell, let's look at its physical and spiritual aspects as described in the Bible. Hell is not only a physical place of torment, but also a state of spiritual separation from God. Physical Aspects of Hell The Bible describes hell as a place of fire and brimstone. This imagery is used to convey the intensity and horror of the punishment. For example, Revelation 20.15 says, And if anyone was not written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire symbolizes a place where torment will be unbearable and eternal. Fire and brimstone are images that highlight the pain and suffering experienced by sinners. In Matthew 13:50, Jesus says, And they will throw them into the fiery furnace. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These words of Jesus highlight the physical torment that those in hell will experience. The fiery furnace symbolizes not only heat and fire, but also hopelessness and eternal suffering. Besides fire, hell is described as a place of darkness. Matthew 8.12 says, And the children of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Outer darkness is a symbol of absolute separation from light and God. This is a state in which sinners are in complete isolation and despair. Spiritual Aspects of Hell Hell is not only a place of physical suffering, but also of spiritual torment. One of the key aspects of hell is separation from God. 2 Thessalonians 1. 9 says, They will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. This means that sinners will be forever separated from God's presence, love, and mercy. This is a spiritual state of absolute alienation and hopelessness. In addition, hell is a place where there is a complete absence of hope and peace. Revelation 14.11 says, And the smoke of their torment will rise up forever and ever, and they will have no rest day or night. This indicates that there is no consolation or relief in hell. The torment continues endlessly, and the souls do not find peace for a moment. Hell is also described as a place where sinners experience constant regret and remorse. In the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Luke 16, 19, 31, the rich man in hell realizes his mistakes and asks Abraham to send Lazarus to warn his brothers. However, they answer him that they have Moses and the prophets, and if they do not listen to them, they will not believe the one who rises from the dead. This emphasizes that in hell, souls are aware of their sins and mistakes but can no longer change anything. Hell is also a place of just punishment. Revelation 20.12 says, And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and the books were opened, and the dead were judged from what was written in the books according to their deeds. This indicates that sinners will be punished according to their deeds and their torment will be just. Thus, hell is a place where physical and spiritual torment intertwine, creating a state of eternal suffering and hopelessness. Hell represents both a physical place of fire and darkness and a spiritual state of complete separation from God and no hope. In the next part, we will look at eternal torment and separation from God as key aspects of hell. One of the most frightening aspects of hell as described in the Bible is eternal torment and absolute separation from God. These two aspects paint a picture of the terrifying and hopeless state in which sinners find themselves. Eternal torment. The Bible is clear that the torment in hell will be eternal and never-ending. 
Revelation 14.11 says, And the smoke of their torment will rise up forever and ever, and they will have no rest day or night, those who worship the beast and his image, and those who receive the mark of his name. This emphasizes the never-ending nature of suffering. The absence of peace, neither day nor night, indicates that the torment will be constant and incessant. In Mark 9.48, Jesus speaks of hell as a place where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. These images highlight the ongoing nature of suffering in hell. The worm that does not die symbolizes eternal decay and suffering, and the fire that does not go out indicates endless burning and pain. Separation from God One of the most terrible aspects of hell is complete and utter separation from God. 2 Thessalonians 1 9 says, They will be punished with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of His power. This emphasizes that sinners will be forever separated from God's presence, love, and glory. This is a state of complete alienation and hopelessness. In Matthew 25, 41, Jesus says, Then He will also say to those on the left, Depart from Me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. These words of Jesus indicate that hell is, this is the place where sinners will be separated from him forever. Depart from me emphasizes absolute exclusion from God's presence. In Luke 16, 26, in the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Abraham says to the rich man, Between us and you there is a great gulf, so that those who would pass from here to you cannot cross, neither can they cross from there to us. This great chasm symbolizes the impassable division between the righteous in Abraham's bosom and the sinners in hell. This separation indicates the impossibility of communication or transition between the two states. Spiritual suffering. Separation from God also means spiritual suffering and the absence of any hope. In the parable of the rich man and Lazarus, Luke 16, 19, 31, the rich man realizes his mistakes and begs Abraham to send Lazarus to warn his brothers. However, he is told that his brothers must listen to Moses and the prophets. This indicates that in hell souls are aware of their sins and mistakes but can no longer change anything. The knowledge that their suffering is eternal and that they are forever separated from God's mercy and love increases their torment. Complete lack of hope. Hell is also characterized by a complete lack of hope. Revelation 20.14 says, And death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. The second death is the final separation from God and eternal punishment. The lack of hope for salvation or relief from suffering creates a state of absolute despair. These aspects of hell, eternal torment and separation from God, emphasize the horror and hopelessness of this place. Eternal torment means endless suffering, and separation from God means spiritual suffering and no hope of salvation or consolation. In the next part, we will look at the metaphors and symbolism that the Bible uses to describe hell. The Bible often uses metaphors and symbolism to describe hell to convey its horror and significance. These images help us better understand what this place is like and what torment awaits sinners. Lake of Fire and Eternal Flame One of the most common metaphors in the Bible is fire. Revelation 20.14 15 says, And death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And whoever was not written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. The lake of fire symbolizes the place of final punishment and eternal torment. The fire that does not go out emphasizes the endless nature of suffering. In Mark 9, 43, 48, Jesus speaks of hell as a place where their worm does not die and the fire is not quenched. These images use physical elements, the worm and fire, to convey the intensity and ongoing suffering in hell. Fire symbolizes not only physical pain, but also spiritual cleansing and punishment. Darkness and Dental Crying 
Another important metaphor for hell is darkness. Matthew 8.12 says, And the children of the kingdom will be cast out into outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Outer darkness symbolizes absolute separation from God, who is the source of light and life. There is a complete absence of light and joy in hell, which creates an atmosphere of hopelessness and despair. Crying and gnashing of teeth are images that highlight the emotional and psychological suffering in hell. Crying symbolizes deep sadness and grief, and gnashing of teeth symbolizes anger and despair. These images help us understand that the torment in hell will not only be physical, but also emotional and spiritual. Worms and Eternal Decay In Mark 9, 48, Jesus uses the image of worms that do not die to describe hell. This symbolizes eternal decay and never-ending torment. Worms indicate destruction and degradation, which increases the horror and hopelessness of the state of sinners in hell. Cup of God's Wrath Revelation 14.10 11 says, He will drink of the wine of the wrath of God, the whole wine prepared in the cup of his wrath, and will be tormented with fire and brimstone before the holy angels and before the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment will ascend forever and ever, and they will have no rest day or night. The cup of God's wrath symbolizes the full and just punishment that God inflicts on sinners. This punishment is the result of God's justice and wrath against sin. Separation and Isolation In Luke 16, 26, Abraham says to the rich man, There is a great gulf fixed between us and you, so that those who would cross from here to you cannot cross, neither can they cross from there to us. The great chasm symbolizes the absolute and impenetrable division between the righteous and the sinners. This separation indicates an inability to communicate or transition between the two states, which increases feelings of isolation and despair. Death and Destruction In Matthew 7, 13, 14, Jesus talks about the broad road that leads to destruction and the narrow road that leads to life. Death symbolizes the final destruction and loss of everything that is valuable. It is a state of complete destruction and loss that enhances the horror and hopelessness of hell. These metaphors and symbols help us better understand the nature of hell and the torment that awaits sinners. The lake of fire, darkness, worms, the cup of God's wrath, division and destruction— all these images emphasize the horror and hopelessness of the condition in hell. In the next part, we will look at the purpose of hell and who it is for. Now let's look at what the purpose of hell is and who it is for according to the biblical texts. Hell is not just a place of punishment, but also a place of just retribution and final judgment. Who is hell for? The Bible clearly indicates that hell was originally prepared for the devil and his angels. In Matthew 25, 41, Jesus says, Then he will also say to those on the left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This emphasizes that hell was not originally created for people, but for the forces of evil who rebelled against God. However, sinners who reject God and his commandments will also end up in hell. Revelation 21, 8 says, But the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and fornicators and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars have their part in the lake that burns with fire and brimstone. This is the second death. Here are the different categories of people who will be punished in hell. These are those who deliberately rejected God and His commandments, preferring to live in sin. The Justice of God's Judgment Hell is also a place of just retribution for sins. Romans 2, 6, 8 says, Who will reward everyone according to his deeds, to those who persevere in doing good, seeking glory, honor, and immortality, eternal life, but to those who are stubborn and do not obey the truth, but give in to unrighteousness, rage, and anger. 
This emphasizes that God rewards everyone according to their deeds. Sinners who persist in their sins and do not submit to the truth will be punished. In Matthew 13, 41, 42, Jesus says, The Son of Man will send His angels, and they will gather out of His kingdom all who offend and the workers of iniquity, and throw them into the fiery furnace. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. These verses emphasize that God will remove all evil from His kingdom and punish those who commit iniquity. Eternal Punishment and Second Death One of the purposes of hell is eternal punishment for those who reject God. Revelation 20.14, 15 says, And death and hell were thrown into the lake of fire. This is the second death, and whoever was not written in the book of life was thrown into the lake of fire. The second death is the final separation from God and eternal punishment. This emphasizes that the fate of sinners will be final and irreversible. Call to repentance. God does not want anyone to perish. 2. Peter 3, 9 says, The Lord is not slack in keeping His promise, as some count slackness, but is patient with us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Hell also serves as a warning and a call to repentance. God gives people the opportunity to turn to Him and avoid eternal punishment. Love and Justice Hell is a manifestation of both God's justice and His love. God's justice requires punishment for sin, but His love is demonstrated by giving every person a chance at salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. This emphasizes that God gives everyone the opportunity to escape hell and gain eternal life. Thus, hell is the place of just retribution and final judgment for the devil, his angels, and all sinners who reject God. The purpose of hell is to provide justice and punishment for sins, but also to warn people, calling them to repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. In the next part, we will look at how God's judgment and punishment of sinners occurs. Now let's look at how God's judgment and punishment of sinners occurs according to biblical texts. This process is important to understanding why hell is a just and inevitable place for those who reject God and His commandments. Judgment Day The Bible says that all people will face God's judgment. Revelation 20, 11, 12 says, Then I saw a great white throne and Him who sat on it, from whose presence heaven and earth fled away, and no place was found for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God, and books, and another book was opened, which is the book of life, and the dead were judged according to what was written in the books. This emphasizes that each person will be judged according to his own works. In Matthew 25, 31, 33, Jesus speaks of his second coming and judgment. When the Son of Man comes in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory and all nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate some from others, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats, and he places the sheep on his right hand, and the goats on his left. Here we see an image of the great division, when the righteous will be separated from the unrighteous. Court Criteria God's judgment will be based on each person's deeds. Romans 2, 6, 8 says, who will reward everyone according to his deeds, to those who persevere in doing good, seeking glory, honor, and immortality, eternal life, but to those who are stubborn and do not obey the truth, but give in to unrighteousness, rage, and anger. This emphasizes that God rewards everyone fairly according to their deeds. In Matthew 25, 34, 36, Jesus continues to describe the criteria of judgment. Then the king will say to those on his right hand, Come, you blessed of my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. 
I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was sick and you visited me in prison. These words emphasize the importance of good deeds and mercy in human life. Punishment of Sinners For those who disobey God and reject His commandments, the punishment will be severe and eternal. Matthew 25, 41 says, Then He will also say to those on the left hand, Depart from Me, you cursed, into the everlasting fire prepared for the devil and his angels. This emphasizes that sinners will be punished along with the devil and his angels in eternal fire. Revelation 20.15 says, And if anyone was not written in the book of life, he was thrown into the lake of fire. The book of life symbolizes the list of those who are saved through faith in Jesus Christ. Those whose names are not found in this book will be thrown into the lake of fire, symbolizing the final and eternal punishment. The Justice of God's Judgment God's judgment is absolutely fair. Psalm 712 says, God is a righteous judge and a God who calls daily to repentance. This emphasizes that God gives every person a chance to repent, and only those who persistently reject His mercy will be punished. Isaiah 3.11 says, Woe to the wicked! It will be his misfortune, for the reward of the work of his hands shall be his. This emphasizes that each person will be held accountable for their deeds and sinners will be punished justly. Possibility of Rescue Despite the severity of God's judgment, God wants all people to be saved. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. This emphasizes that God provides every person with the opportunity to escape hell through faith in Jesus Christ. Thus, God's judgment and punishment of sinners is just retribution for their deeds. God gives every person the opportunity of repentance and salvation, but those who stubbornly reject His mercy will be punished with eternal torment in hell. In the next part, we will look at how you can escape hell and find salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. Now let's look at how you can escape hell and find salvation through faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible clearly teaches that God desires for all people to be saved and have eternal life. Faith in Jesus Christ is the key to salvation and deliverance from eternal punishment. Faith in Jesus Christ. John 3.16, one of the most famous passages of Scripture, reads, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have eternal life. This emphasizes that faith in Jesus Christ is the basis for salvation. God sent His Son to save mankind from sin and its consequences, including hell. Ephesians 2, 8, 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and this not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not by works, so that no one can boast. This emphasizes that salvation comes through faith and not through works. God's grace and mercy allow us to be saved if we believe in Jesus Christ. Repentance and Conversion Repentance is an important step on the path to salvation. In Acts 3.19, Peter urges, Repent therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out. Repentance means admitting your sins and turning to God with a sincere desire to change your life. This is the first step to accepting God's mercy and achieving salvation. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God promises forgiveness and cleansing from sins to those who sincerely confess their sins and turn to Him. Jesus, the way, the truth, and the life. Jesus clearly said that He is the only way to God. In John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through Me. This emphasizes that only through faith in Jesus Christ can salvation and eternal life be achieved. He is the only mediator between God and man, living by faith. After accepting Jesus Christ as Savior, it is important to live by faith, 
following His teachings and commandments. Colossians 2, 6, 7 says, Therefore, just as you have received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk in Him, rooted and grounded in Him, and established in the faith as you were taught, abounding in it with thanksgiving. This emphasizes the importance of spiritual growth in following Christ in daily life. Galatians 5, 22, 23 describes the fruit of the Spirit that should be manifested in the life of a believer. And the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, gentleness, self-control. Living by faith means that we strive to demonstrate these qualities in our actions and relationships with others. Confidence of Salvation The Bible teaches that we can be sure of our salvation. 1 John 5.13 says, I have written these things to you who believe on the name of the Son of God, so that you may know that if you believe on the Son of God, you have eternal life. This confidence is based on God's promises and faithfulness. We can be confident that if we believe in Jesus Christ and follow Him, we will receive salvation and eternal life. Conclusion Salvation from hell is possible through faith in Jesus Christ, repentance, and life by faith. God desires for all people to be saved and have eternal life, and He gives everyone the opportunity to accept this gift. It is important to remember that salvation is not the result of our works, but of God's grace and mercy. If we believe in Jesus Christ, repent of our sins and follow Him, we can be confident of our salvation and deliverance from eternal torment in hell. In the next part, we will summarize and give food for thought so that everyone can draw their own conclusions and strengthen their faith. As we wrap up our discussion, let's recap the key points we covered. The topic of hell is a complex and important part of biblical teaching, and understanding it helps us understand the depth of God's love, justice, and mercy. Summary of Key Points Biblical Definition of Hell We learn that the Bible uses different terms such as Sheol, Gienna, and Hades to describe hell as a place of torment and punishment for sinners. Description of Hell in the Old and New Testaments the Old Testament presents Sheol as a dark place where all the dead go, while the New Testament describes hell as a place of eternal fire and suffering. Nature of Hell Hell is described as a place of physical and spiritual torment where sinners suffer fire, darkness, and complete separation from God. Metaphors and Symbolism The Bible uses imagery such as the lake of fire, eternal fire, darkness, and the crying of teeth to convey the horror and hopelessness of hell. Purpose of Hell Hell was originally prepared for the devil and his angels, but sinners who reject God will also end up there. God's judgment is fair and based on each person's deeds. God's judgment and punishment of sinners. All people will face God's judgment, and those who reject God and live in sin will be punished with eternal torment in hell. Salvation from hell through faith in Jesus Christ. Faith in Jesus Christ, repentance, and living by faith are the keys to salvation and deliverance from eternal punishment. A call to thought and faith. Hell is a scary reality that the Bible teaches about, but it also offers hope and salvation through Jesus Christ. God does not want anyone to perish. 2. Peter 3. 9 says, the Lord is not slack in keeping His promise, as some count slackness, but is patient with us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Each of us has the opportunity to accept God's mercy and gain eternal life through faith in Jesus Christ. If you have not yet taken this step, think about your position before God and what awaits you after death. God loves you and offers you salvation. Final words. In conclusion, we want to encourage you to reflect on your life and relationship with God. Hell is a place of eternal punishment, but God offers us a way of salvation through Jesus Christ. Accept this gift and live according to His teachings to gain eternal life and escape the horrors of hell. Thank you for being with us today. 
We hope this information will help you better understand the Bible's teaching about hell and strengthen your faith. Subscribe to our channel, leave your comments, and share this video with your friends. See you again.